and watercolors are the same way, where I put in my darks first. Um, and oil paintings. My oil painting teacher is like, you need to lay in your darks first because you want to know, you want to be able to play off of your dark. You, you want to know how light your lights are going to look against your darks. I don't know if that makes any sense at all. But um, well, I watched a show one time and the painter was always painting in the light. That was what he used to say. He was painting the light. Painting the light, yeah. Um, well, because I, I, like, I started painting with watercolors and you don't use white paint normally when you're yeah. painting with watercolors. No, not white, but painting in the light, L-I-G-H. Oh, L-I-G-H, yeah. 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 Um, I just I just work from dark to light. It mm -hmm. just works better for me to be able to play off the darks. Some people well, will, it works. Yeah, it's good. Some people play off the lights. They they would rather put the yeah. light values yeah. in mm -hmm. and then. But either way, you're still you're going to be going back and forth. So it really doesn't matter. However. I like to build up my lights gradually, and the only, only way for me to do that is to start with my darks first. All right, now just to, for grins and to show dramatically what the colors will look like, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna mix a highlight red and put that over the highlight areas. So you could literally, if you didn't want to lay in your paint thickly, you could just do light washes over this type of a grayscale. Okay, I'm going to use this um, said orange, but it looks like an ochre. And then this is a, like a vermilion red. Oh, I'm slopping the paint around. And it is gonna, it's gonna look quite orange. But all, another one of the beautiful things about layering thin layers is that if you don't like it, put another layer of something else over it. <laughs> Tint it a little bit a different way and go, oh, okay, that looks better. And I use, the way that I paint, is kind of a feathery, it's almost like drawing with a pencil kind of a thing. I'm using the end of the brush and I use kind of a crosshatch sort of thing. It's very much like drawing with a pencil. I like to draw with colored pencils and that's exactly how I learned how to do it. You put in a layer of color and then you cross hatch another color over it. See that I'm keeping the depth and volume of the underpaintings by doing the thin washes. Keep forgetting I got red pants here going on too. See that okay? I'm really close. Thank you. All right, I put a highlight over the lighter areas, but I also laid the same color in over the darks. I because it's so thin, it'll help to blend it all together mm -hmm. by spreading that color in over the dark color as well. And as I work back and forth, if if I have tinted the uh, 
darker area too much with the orange, then I'll just go back in with the burgundy into the darker area and fix that. It's almost like as if I'm an indecisive painter, which actually I am. <laughs> Oh, I'll do this. No, never mind. Can you see how it's evolving? Just with the, I've just put a few layers in over that, and as I go, they'll just the color will become more and more brilliant. Do you think that uh, oil oils are richer color than acrylic or? I do. You do. I do. That's why I would prefer at, at the end of each piece to go in with oil oil mm. paint and do the detail. I, I think the colors are more brilliant, um, and I I don't know that they are. It just seems that way. And I can tell you that if I do a whole figure in acrylic, oftentimes I'm dissatisfied with the depth at that point. Um, so then, then I, I want to go back in with oil paints and, uh, and give it a little more, I guess, contrast or I don't, I, I don't really understand why it's that way. Um, but there has been a couple of pieces that I've done all in acrylic that I, I go back and I keep looking at them going, God, you know, I wish I could have popped that a little bit more. And I really think the only way to do it is to go in with the oils. Um, take some more of this color. I like white palettes. Some people work with different colored palettes and <coughs> white I can just use the edges and I can see my color. And then I, when I unload the brush onto a white paper towel I can see what's going on. Sometimes I'll even have a white card on my desk. Okay what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, I'm going to bump that highlight up a little bit more on the blanket here. Now there, there will be places where I will have to go back in with maybe the cream gray, a really light uh, gray, to do a turning edge uh, reflective light in some of the dark areas, but I'll, I'll do that down the road a little bit. stick with this area, this one area. Then I'll probably go home and paint over this again. Pairs. That's the other thing about these new brushes. You know what? Brushes just are not made well anymore. You painting along, and all of a sudden, there's a hair dragging through. The sunny yellow is kind of a yellow with white in it, so it is going to turn the red kind of a peachy color. But for a very, very high highlight, 
That'll be all right. That's what I mean. Just make a lot of things. Another thing that will happen too is when I'm working wet and wet like this too, the paint will start lifting and so I start yeah. using more of a dabbing motion and I think that's why I use the cross hatch is because it's more of a dabbing motion. It won't lift the paint as much. How do you lighten a basic red without going to pink? I use an orange. Orange? Yeah. That's it. You can't use white, and you can't use... Because I've had it a couple times where you know, a red on a decal is definitely different than the red that's coming out of a bottle. And I could never lighten it because I was always going to pink right. with white. So you use orange to, to lighten it. And that's another reason for laying in the darks first. If you go, if you go in dark, then uh, and then you lay in a light next to it, the dark will make the light look lighter. Mm -hmm. It fools the eye, so you don't have to actually use like a really light light. I don't, I don't know if that does that make sense at mm -hmm. all. Um, the the dark sitting next to the light will make the light look lighter than it really is, and it's a fool, fooling the eye kind of a thing. Um, in, my, in my case, I mean, with modeling and, and decals, I'm not usually looking for the shading that you are. I'm just looking for the, the, the quality of the of the color is different than the, than you know what I'm getting out of the bottle, and I've got to lighten it up from the bottle or change the color in the bottle to so match the decal. Okay, now I'm going to go back. Yeah, I've, what I've done is I've put, I, I'm going to just focus on this one area and really contrast it so you can see the differences. I think it's an, area, it's an area I can go back home and mess with later if I have to. I'm pulling a little blue into the brown. Go into my dark gray, yeah. and then I'm gonna yeah. thinly put in some darks along the edge here. Give it some volume. There's a weird um, fold in the engraving that I think I'm going to end, end up painting out right now. I'm kind of following along the engraving, which doesn't really look right to me. So I'll end, that's, a, that's what happens a lot of times with these flats is that um, there's an innie or an Audi where it ends up not looking exactly right. So then you gotta you got to work with it and, and paint over it. <coughs> I do know people that sand these things down. In some areas, they'll sand them down flat. Because what happens is, uh, traditionally, you'll have a designer and a, a, a person that does a drawing or whatever, and then that that's a different person than the person that does the engraving. Um, there are some, some of the engravers do it all, like uh, Vladimir Nuzhdin, I believe he does all his drawings and, and engraving himself. But what will happen is if somebody else does the drawing and then hands it to the engraver, sometimes the engraver can't understand from a line drawing uh, whether it's an innie or an outie. So in a way, it's kind of a miracle that some of these things come out as well as they do. All right. I don't know if you can. As I mentioned, it's going to look funky for a while. So, you know, tune in later. <laughs> a month later from now and it'll it'll look a lot better.